Hello everyone, welcome to Lyseric Papers. Today's topic is the electron structure. For those that are looking at this for the first time, I have just a small refresher. The electron is fundamentally made up of these atoms, both negative and positive. These little tiny charges have, of course, a mass. And as they peel off, they create this helix that is stable because the centrifugal force of the mass of an atom is counterbalanced by the charge force or which turns into a magnetic force. So this wave will be a stable wave that can fly through space in, in eternity if it's not hit by another wave, which if does typically will lose a certain amount of atoms and therefore the frequency will go down. Anyway, that also one of the reasons for the redshift, but that's a different topic altogether. So for those that are new, I would suggest you go back to the four previous videos that I have done about the second electromagnetic wave. Again, the second electromagnetic wave is a particle wave that basically acts very similar to the oscillating electromagnetic wave that Maxwell describes with the exception that it does have actually a mass property and we know that the photon does have a mass property. So if you go back, you could I give a complete video of the second electromagnetic wave and how it works and the mechanics of it. Um, and then basically from there, I unravel the actual meaning of the fine structure, the vacuum permeability. And then I go to the next step of actually calculating the diameter of the atom, which will be very useful later to unravel how all the particles are actually structured. So let's go now to the structure and look at the first picture here, which is a cross section of the most outer layer of the electron. You can see here I have basically pictured four layers. I could have pictured uh, six layers or eight layers or 12 or any number. So the first layer is the AX layer, the second layer with the negative with the positive atoms, in this case of the electron, uh, is the A0 layer, then the AX layer, which is just negative uh, atoms and so forth. So you have AX, A0, AX, A0, AX, and so forth and so on. The next picture is actually when you're looking at the surface without the AX layers, in this case, the positive atom is exposed. And I've drawn a little blue box around there because basically, there's four spaces and um, the A0 has three of these spaces or positions occupied. And then of course, there where you have the, the positive atom, then there would be the atom of the AX layer, which is then of course negative. And that leads you to the actual picture with, when you're looking at the surface of the electron with the AX layer, which shows you then that of those four positions, three are negative. This kind of goes then to my original calculation, which I calculated the actual volume of the electron. And then out of that, I calculated the surface. In the event I had calculated the first surface, I had or did not use any empty positions. If I do, as you can see here, five out of eight positions are not filled when you take the fundamental um, uh, cube, which uh, you know I had outlined in that little blue box. So if you then take that into account, you obtain a volume which is a lot greater than a volume that um, is completely filled all positions are filled. And then the resulting surface area is of course also larger, in fact, 1.59, 10 to the power of 14. And it is actually the surface of the actual electron is 1.33 times larger than if it was completely filled. So the interesting thing here is that since, as you've seen, 
we have three negative electrons on the uh, three negative atoms on the outside fundamentally the a0 becomes the number of atoms on the surface that actually create the negative charge of the electron so if you have the electron charge you have to actually use the a0 to come up with the correct individual atom charge which i have done a long time ago and i've been consistently using that uh, and not using aov and then uh, dividing by 1.33 so in terms of negative charges you can use a0 as only three quarters of the surface of the a0v have negative atom charges i hope that is pretty clear this leads actually to the to the interesting one of the first proofs that this structure that i am describing here is correct because the testing that was done to show that under certain circumstances the electron only has one third of the electron charge uh, this experiment was done by goldman sue and uh, the uh, picciotto so what is the reason for this is that if you take the normal electron three quarters or three out of four positions are negative when you look at from at the surface of the electron if you remove the ax which is easily possible and i'll get to that probably in the coming spin videos then of course you have two negative to one positive so from the perspective of the outer surface one positive atom neutralizes one negative atom so that only one negative atom contributes to the negative charge which is then one out of three char one out of three atoms so this shows really kind of in a sim simple way how and why you will be able to measure one third in a typical simple actual experimental setup you can uh, force the electron to lose uh, one uh, um, two-thirds of its charge by removing just the AX layer so another really I think compelling proof is that you can actually recreate or calculate the Lehman series just by adding a, certain, the, a number of layers so first of all 20 of the a0 ax layers plus 1 ax creates the Rydberg frequency of 3.28 10 to the power of 15 which equals um, 3.21 10 to the power of 50 atoms remember i have shown in the very first videos that the frequency is directly correlates to the number of atoms so one hertz is one atom so the simple conclusion here is that with the a0 ax layer we can replicate exactly the Lehman series so the next thing of course then you use the Balmer series and here also the second electromagnetic wave approach delivers very good results but I have to also state here that there is a slight deviation between the Rydberg calculation and the second electromagnetic wave layer calculation. The small difference between the second electromagnetic wave and the Rydberg calculation are caused by additional effects. The main one is of course the spin. But that to detail that here is a little bit too uh, exhausting and I will cover this in a later video because I'd be running out of time too. Staying with the 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 Rydberg um, frequency or the Rydberg calculation, the proof four is when you have each individual series. Uh, here I've shown the Lehman, Balmer, Passion, Bracket, and Fun series, um, and I've shown that the second electromagnetic wave layer theory replicates the Lehman series uh, perfectly, the Balmer series just about, and the same with the Passion, Bracket, and Fun. But what's even more interesting, if I then 
subtract the second number of a series from the first and the third from the second and the fourth from the from the third I get this 4.56 10 to the power of 14 1.59 10 to the power of 14 7.38 to the power of 13 and 4.0 to the power of 13 as you can easily see the 1.59 and the 4.0 is 4.0 is the ax and the 1.59 is the a zero v so what is the 4.56 it's basically three times the a zero a x layer and the 7.38 is the a zero minus the a x layers so this is consistent if you do this exercise for each series and this shows you that the difference between each electromagnetic wave in a series equates to the equipotential the same equipotential of the layers which also shows you the power of explanation of the second electromagnetic wave layer approach one of the most interesting things which will lead also to further interesting details of the structure is the a0 minus ax because in the first instance it's a little bit difficult to picture how this can happen but again, I'll have to do a or, or address this in a separate video because I can't cover this all in this one video. So let's go to potentially other proofs. If you take, for instance, and look at the spectrums of the different elements, you again always will find more or less to a high precision that with the layers, with the calculus that the that the individual spectrum or the, the individual frequencies of the helium series equates to a number of layers of the second electromagnetic wave or the the the, the uh, electron layer structure so the conclusion here is that the electron fine structure using the second electromagnetic wave theory matches with the Rydberg constant and also with other measurements. At the same time, it delivers a clear reason for the behavior of the electron in the orbit. And as I will later show, if you add this spin, which is part of how the electron interacts with the second electromagnetic wave, you will then see why there are uh, certain differences to the the slight differences to the Rydberg but fundamentally the orbits are determined by the layers and then the exact number is somewhat altered by the spin and then that spin and the layers create an equilibrium to the proton to the charge of the proton and thus you have this exact number of the Rydberg co uh, constant or the Rydberg calculations. So the spinning electron is creates its magnetic field and this magnetic field allows the electron to capture the the atoms flying in the helix of the second electromagnetic wave and also this electromagnetic wave helps to actually then propel the uh, second electromagnetic wave back out of the electron. So it captures and expels, captures and expels the second electromagnetic wave. And this is the fundamental mechanism that I'll have to show in later videos. The interaction between the second electromagnetic wave and the magnetic field is, ca is, is actually also the cause for the particle spins. Because as the wave with these charged particles pass by, they actually pull like a top spin the electron or the or the the the, the um, uh, proton into a very fast revolution per minute second microseconds <laughs> whatever you want to call this um, so the spin is extremely fast and actually those calculations also fit with the exact um, um, frequency of the spin of the uh, uh, of, of the particles so the interaction between layers and spin create the orbits as I've already mentioned 
and the spin creates the force equilibrium that determines the size of proton and the size of the electron. And another phenomenon, like the difference in the hydrogen and the deuterium spectrum, will reveal more about the structure, but that is uh, a lot more uh, detail, which I can't really cover this in a quick video like this. The most interesting thing about the negative and positive atom, which I also have to, at some point, create a video about, is that the fundamental, most stable neutral particle is if one atom and one, one negative and one positive atom combine, which most of the time that's where how they exist. And this actually creates what we call this dark matter. Uh, this is why it doesn't interact with anything. Um, it's, and it's really interesting if I take the mass of the atom and I use the Avogadro number, I get really close to the number that is being tossed around as the mass of the dark matter. And this leads to all kinds of really interesting, also probably in the future, technologies that have to do with uh, storage of energy and also the use of energy. So I hope this was interesting. Um, I would appreciate uh, if you hit the like button and since there's a lot of other interesting things coming out and I don't know exactly when, it could be in a couple of weeks, it could be in a couple of months, but I would hit the subscription because then um, you'll stay tuned because the, more, the most interesting things are now coming. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.